You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are recording at the <laughs> LWML <laughs> National Convention. Yes, so we are. by the time you hear this, we will have hopefully departed Lexington yes. and made it safely back home. Yes. And uh, But while we are at Lexington, Kentucky, at the LWML National Convention, we got to sit down with our good friend, Deaconess Heidi Kamen Yay. from Mental Health Mondays and author of... Broke, uh, from finding hope from brokenness to restoration. You'll get and it. You'll get it by fall when we're like back on the air. Yes. When you have a new book coming yeah. out. We actually talk about it in depth. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fine. Finding hope from brokenness to restoration. Uh, also, a uh, Bible study leader at the LWL convention. And, um, and and just people are like, hey, that's that's Heidi Gaiman. How many times did you get stopped coming over here? <laughs> it was three. And it's the best to like be with people people right in Again. physical presence <laughs> mm -hmm. it does something for the heart soul mind and strength right mm -hmm. and also i think it's really cool because very rarely does someone stop you and say like hey you know do you like nachos like it's always a <laughs> conversation <laughs> that has some substance and depth that's funny that and happened to me like three times people ask me about if I nachos do like you like yes. nachos yes hmm. I do, by the way. I, not well, that good. I don't like those conversations, but it's pretty cool. I feel like when people stop you and say like, hey, I read something you wrote or, hey, uh, you're related to my aunt's uncle's second cousin mm -hmm. and we're Lutheran together. You know what I yeah. mean? There is yep. some depth in that. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. One of my high school teachers was here randomly today. So that was fun. Mm. You know who Did else not is know here? she was going to be here. Three booths down, Concordia University, Wisconsin. Yes. Thank you, Concordia Live University, uncommon. Wisconsin, for supporting the coffee hour. See, you already got I the tagline. I just wanted to get it in you there. Just Live <laughs> uncommon. Thank you, Concordia University, Wisconsin. All right, so mm -hmm. LWL convention, you get to be Bible study leader this year, which is fascinating, and mm -hmm. uh, getting to talk. And you're also signing some books while you're here, too. That and is true. Just getting yeah. to visit with people face to face, which is nice. So, so yeah. tell us what what are you speaking about? You, I'm talking about Jesus as our solid ground, but even more specifically, the resilience that Jesus brings to our lives. So we run the race. That's the LDML theme. And I love that they saw that and thought, Heidi talks about connection and she talks about mental health stuff. And this seems like a really good opportunity to talk about that around Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, which is that running the race marked out for us. Um, and so, yeah, the two themes of the Bible studies are solid ground and also resilience. And I would say if you had to narrow it down to one, that resilience really comes through because this race, you know, isn't ever easy, mm -hmm. even when it's joyful, even when it's wonderful. Um, and so I think that... Um, idea people are a little bit hungry for in our world today. Uh, resilience is a hot topic in mental health that comes up a lot, um, but it is a biblical concept, especially grounded in Hebrews 12, and the concept of endurance mm -hmm. is deeply connected to resilience. And so that's one place we go in the Bible studies really clearly is looking at what is endurance, what is hope, and how do those lead to resilience? Mm -hmm. So tell us more about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, are you going to tell us? <laughs> I was going to withhold. Um, <laughs> yes. So endurance, especially um, the Greek terminology for endurance in particular. And I'm, I'm not going to try to say Greek words on the air because I will butcher <laughs> that to death. Um, but it has to do with uh, hypo is like the first part of it, mm -hmm. the prefix. And hypo is something that's under, right? Hypothyroidism is that under, it's underperforming. It's not dispensing the hormones in the way we need it to be. Or um, hyper is over. And so hypo under, so we're under the weights that Hebrews 12 talks about. And I invite the listener to look it up for themselves because it is a really powerful part of scripture. Um, but under uh, the weights 
that so easily entangle us underneath sin, of course, but also those broader weights, uh, the abuses of life, the prejudices, the injustices, the struggles, that sin in the world, that brokenness that we talk about mm-hmm. in Finding Hope so much. I um, mean, I think it's really powerful, actually, in John Kleinig's commentary. He especially, the commentary for Hebrews, you can pick it up from cph.org, um, he <laughs> brings up um, that the word for sin in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 there, in particular, is a vague reference that includes those injustices, that includes that va- that broad idea of sin rather than just the sin that I bring into my life myself and, mm-hmm. and that I'm aware or unaware of. And so that's piece one of endurance. Piece two of endurance is that it also has to do with the concept of staying or remaining. Mm-hmm. And so that, I think, really is a really great biblical nod toward the now and not yet of life. The fact that Jesus has taken that weight off, that he put it on the cross, that is huge for our mental health, that we can stay in that redemption and, and uh, be encouraged by it every day and know the, the battle's won, the race, mm-hmm. the finish line has already been completed by Jesus. However, we're all aware that that's, not all there is to the story and resilience and resilient. Gosh, words are hard. I talk too much today. <laughs> <Well>, <laughs> yep. It's a busy time. Yeah, for right. Resilience <laughs> comes from um, also, I think, this understanding that uh, Jesus is still with us today. Mm-hmm. There's still work to be done, that every day he's taking that weight of sin off of our shoulder, that it continues, and that restoration comes especially ahead, that it, it is, there's big restoration to come in Jesus. And so in order to live in that kind of not yet mm-hmm. of the redemption and restoration to come is um, we need to, to have hope. <laughs> <laughs> and hope I would bring to the table in the Bible studies is not something we get from bootstraps or from picking ourselves up. We can't will ourselves into hope, but that we need one another for that. And again, in John Kleinig's commentary, praise the Lord for John Kleinig <laughs> and his research in <laughs> Hebrews, um, real thorough stuff that... Um, really that all of heaven cheers you on this crowd of witnesses that is around us is where the hope comes from that if i'm just trying to do this race on my own it will feel way more burdensome but the hope coupled with endurance the hope that you sarah bring bring to me you andy bring to me coupled with that endurance that christ brings is where resilience comes from that i can keep running this race we talk about race I like to run, but I'm not a distance runner. I'm more of a short <laughs> distance runner. But I know that there is a, a finish line to something that's going to end at some point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've seen a lot of parallels to race in the theme here at the LWML convention. Mm-hmm. Um, a, as you're walking around and getting to visit with people and seeing the, the theme unfold here, w- what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What's, uh, w- what are the connections that you're making with that, that race theme here as you're talking with people? Yeah, I see it a lot. Um, and in the opening worship, uh, Reverend David Meyer from Michigan District really uh, overlapped with a lot of what I wanted to talk about, which is really <laughs> funny when God's like, here you go. You both have the same idea when you open this passage, you know. But he talked a lot about our need for connection and also talked about the fact that we um, uh, aren't knit just for the beginning that God is knitting us constantly, and then we are knit to be finishers. Like, he's, he's got a plan for that finish. And I think that was a really cool vantage point of the race. Um, and I feel like people are carrying that around with them. Like, that it gives us a sense of purpose. And in the, the mission grants of the LDML and the work of LDML, that that's part of that purpose of the race, of where we're headed is great, but but we have some stuff now and that's a valuable part of the race as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk more about uh, this? I love this part of uh, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Um, I think that's something that probably resonates even more so Mm -hmm. now since we're able to be around Mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Talk about more, (laughs) talk more about uh, that part of of all of this, how how, uh, being around people plays into Mm -hmm. this hope and resilience. Yeah, I think it's really cool how Hebrews 12 is first um, 
you know, follows Hebrews 11. And that usually when we read Hebrews 11, we're that by faith, by faith, Abel, by faith, David, by faith, all these people, by faith, Sarah. Um, it's really cool. And at the end of Hebrews 11 is this whole little part about how people like um, quenched fire and received their dead back. It's all this really epic biblical God restoring <laughs> and redeeming. And then there's this section that's like, and they were tortured and mm-hmm. they were sawn in two and they and beginning of Hebrews 12 the first word is therefore like this is our cloud of witnesses all of this that has gone before us is part of that cloud of witnesses and uh, that is so encouraging and that encouragement seems like too little of a word right there's so much more to that uh, but then the rest of Hebrews 12 after that cloud of witnesses in in verse 3 is about the now and the present and and the people that we are running this race alongside and what that looks like, how hard it is, the things that are going to come at us in relationship together. And so I think the fullness of that cloud of witnesses is really clear in that. And then you walk into a space that's a convention center (laughs) and you haven't been to a convention center in a good two years because we couldn't do convention centers and filling this space. And people are laughing together in close physical proximity and it makes your mental health so happy. (laughs) There's just this sense of like, this is kind of how it's supposed to be. And it's okay that sometimes it's not like that. We've been there, we have to honor that, but also knowing that uh, this is the way God made us to be together. And that's a good thing. Together, not hiding at home and yeah, I mean it, <laughs> for a long period of right, time. Right, all yeah. of that has its space. Like we are, right. you know, stillness, aloneness, all has yeah. its its place. Honestly, we're never alone though with our uh, relationship with Christ. And that does change aloneness and stillness for us, you know. Uh, instead, we were really made for the body and we were made to bring people to the body, to celebrate that together. Mm. We're talking with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman at the LWML National Convention, recording with Heidi. So this is post-convention um, sharing with you while we had a chance to sit down with Heidi at the convention. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Sorry, I didn't move my mic back <laughs> in front of my face. <laughs> We're recording with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman at the LWL Convention in Lexington, Kentucky, author of Finding Hope from Brokenness to Restoration. See, I said it straight through there. You did. Nice job. You Thank knew you. the title it's, this time. It's, it's right here. I've, I've even read it. I have a book in my hands right now well, because I, we are right next to the CPH booth. This and is so true. It's we pretty have these cool books when we can just be like, hey, hot off of the book. the book rack that is right next <laughs> to us. It's that is cool. kind of convenient. It is. Yeah. There's lots of good books over there. Camp out next to CPH. Then. It's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're talking about resilience, uh, which you've been speaking about here at the LWML convention. Um, resilience. Where do we want to go next? I'm, yeah. I got sidetracked with the technical stuff during the break, and I forgot where we left <laughs> off on the conversation. Right. Well, I think it does help to define it a little bit better, which we kind of talked about it in vague terms, and we talked about those uh, 
the way the Greek and the nuances of the Greek impacts our view of resilience. I think going further into that, I'm just going to read you the definition for resilience, two definitions that I offer for resilience and finding hope. I think this is helpful because I'll also tell you why this is different from a cultural understanding of resilience, whether like colloquial or through like psychological research and everything right now. So resilience, the capacity to come back from a struggle with renewed hope, life, and a greater ability to respond to future stressors. Also the internal capacity of people to recover, gaining new insights, strengths, and capabilities we did not have This is important before the struggle. Hmm. So culturally, we look at resilience as bouncing back. Mm -hmm. Like something happens and you bounce back. And one analogy I use in the book is like, that's made for stress balls and memory foam mattresses. (laughs) That works real good for describing the resilience that comes, you know, in those kind of inanimate objects. But humans are more complex than that. And bouncing back is maybe not the goal. Growth is the goal. Mm -hmm. Um, And even to some degree, sometimes in our life, we might only see it as making it through. Like I walked through that, but God is able to see what he did in it. And I may not see any of that, right? Some of our struggles were like, oh, look at that. I grew and God brought good and I can see it. Other struggles, that's not evident. I'm like, that was a cruddy year and I don't know what to make of that Mm -hmm. that is more in line with biblical resilience that we can just simply walk through it and there is this sense of newness at the end of it I think that comes and so that's really important um so yeah I think those definitions are helpful um I also think that uh it's important to note that biblical resilience like most things all things in Christ is already one for us in Christ. So it's not something I work towards. It's something that is given to me through the Holy Spirit. Um, And I do think that's kind of cool. If you think about the times in your life when the Holy Spirit just really showed up in a strong way and you were able to see that resilience out loud, it's always there, right? (laughs) But just really vibrantly, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, But at the same time, we get resilience built in us by God through our unique experiences. You know, Andy, you've had different experiences than I have. Sarah, you've had different experiences than I have. Um, And honoring that together, I think, again, the cloud of witnesses, when we sit around and talk about those things and hash them out and get insight from each other and open the word together, then that resilience, we get to see it more clearly. And then it builds like God is utilizing that as an experience Mm -hmm. to let the Holy Spirit speak out louder. I want to dig in a little bit more to this part uh, before a struggle, uh, because in order to have resilience, we have to have a struggle first. I know, right? Bummer. Right. So <laughs> what is this? What is this role of struggle mm-hmm. in our lives mm-hmm. if we have to have these struggles in order to have these other things? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think struggle and wrestling are very well connected, and. Um, I would say that struggle is something that happens much the same way that pain and suffering are connected. So pain happens. It's just going to happen. Struggle happens. It's just going to happen. We live in a broken world, finding hope from brokenness to restoration. Um, Right. (laughs) And so like (laughs) the brokenness is going to happen and that's a really important piece of it. Um, Yeah. So I think we have to get honest about the fact that struggle is just going to happen. And I think we try to like, pretend like this won't happen especially like with our own children or with kids in our midst especially like we think that we can protect them first Mm -hmm. of all it will come i i think also we just we live a very comfortable Mm. life especially here in north america we live a very comfortable uh life many of us do and i think perhaps that's one of the reasons why the last year was so challenging not that we don't have struggles, not that people in North America don't have struggles, but... It's first world problems, right. hashtag. Yes. <laughs> the, our first world problems aren't real struggles. Like, My right. internet the, doesn't work. Right. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would say, like, it's such a slippery slope towards comparative suffering mm. because it's never... Like, we think it's going to be so helpful to be like, well, that's not that bad. Right. But that actually 
it like diminishes our ability to walk through the struggle mm. or the comparison of it does not do wonders for our mental health. It in fact impedes our mental health. So that we talk about comparative suffering in finding hope. And so if you're interested in that, you can look at it more. And so you are correct. There is a nuance though, too, like being able to look in gratitude with the life you've been given, like the practice of gratitude in particular, not just like, oh, be thankful. Um, that's different. That's helpful. Um, but it is like a little bit of a slope where we start to pick up like, well, I should just be thankful and that those shoulds turn to shame and that's not really helpful. Um, what is helpful is wrestling, which is what I was saying. Struggle and wrestling are deeply connected. And so we can choose to just go through the struggle and ignore it and stuff it down and pretend like it's not there. Um, or we can actively engage in wrestling with it and wrestling with God in it. And much my favorite Bible story, hands down, Jacob wrestling with God. And he, he got a new name. It seems worth it. And I think that that, I think because we're baptized individuals, and we proclaim that as our identity, we think that, like we've already done the wrestling and now we just do life. When in reality, for us, we got the new name. It's time to wrestle and that's okay. Like that's, it's just a different way that we experience it as post-resurrection believers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember one of our professors teaching back in, yes, back when we went to college. Um, <laughs> Before you did, Sarah. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I, I remember Dr. Hines speaking, you know, teaching about the Christian life, mm -hmm. and describing it as as uh, sailing across mm -hmm. an open body of water. You don't just sail in a straight line, tack back and forth, because mm. you're we're going to wrestle, but we're not always going to wrestle. Not everything's mm -hmm. going to be a struggle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but because we have that wrestling and that struggling. Um, that's, as you pointed out earlier, that resilience comes out of that. Right. Mm -hmm. It can come out of that. We, we've mm -hmm. got to have that, that struggle, that wrestle. Yeah, and I think <laughs> it's really interesting to me that God, um, God hates sin. Like, it, he, can't be a, he cannot be in relationship without Christ because of sin. However, um, it's interesting to me always that God created us knowing what would happen. And I think I bring this up on Mental Health Monday all the time. Like he knew the wrestling and struggle would be part of it. Of course, that's then worth it to him to some degree. And it's not that simple, but that gives me great comfort that God looked at the world and looked at humanity before it was even a thing and said, this is going to be part of your existence, struggling, wrestling, resilience. Oh, I have good in that. I think this might be a good plan. I think Jesus is a good plan. And without all of the suffering and struggling and wrestling, like, Jesus isn't necessary either. I know that just got like, <laughs> maybe too far, but it's so good to consider like what, what is God's thoughts on these things? And that's why we open scripture again and again. That's why we have mental health Monday is so we can kind of hash out some of these complicated processes that God has knit in us. Like wrestling isn't a bad thing. Struggling isn't a necessarily an entirely mm -hmm. bad thing. It's useful. It, it, it produces resilience. I, I guess what I was getting at with the, you know, our, our comfortable lives is that mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we sometimes try to avoid that altogether, avoid that wrestle rather Absolutely. than just embrace it and yeah. realize, okay, something good is going to yeah. come out of this. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to gain something. Yeah, no, um, it's my true. Neighbor, it, it, it's going to be some way for me to help my neighbor. That something. is really good too, Andy. You know, in dialectical behavioral therapy, they define suffering as pain with the absence of reality. Like our inability to engage in just what is Hmm. really impacts our ability to walk through it and deal with it and come out the other side with that resilience and to also access hope. It's one reason we need people in our lives because we, we will consistently just need help. You know, we can't do it on our own. Yeah. So bringing this back full circle to hope, we've talked through all this resilience and having this cloud of witnesses and having to go through the struggle. Um, where do we find hope then at mm -hmm. the end of all of that? Mm -hmm. That's really good. I really like to talk about hope, about the big, like the big capital H hope that Jesus brings. You know, it's glorious. Uh, because of it, there is joy in the middle of all of it. Um, but then there's also those tiny pieces of hope, like lowercase H hope. And that is, I think, Andy, what you're talking about, the tacking back and forth. It isn't all struggle and wrestling. Instead, there is like 
beauty and breezes on that <laughs> water and there's the mm-hmm. sunshine on our faces and warming our skin like there are these other things in life that bring hope along with it and sometimes i think we do people a disservice when we easily forget those tiny hopes mm. and both are very important and all about jesus so very lutheran of you it's a mm. capital h lowercase h That's yes you know it's <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very Lutheran. It's just the way it is. (laughs) So wrapping up our time here at the LWML convention, um, what's the highlight of an LWML convention? Because this is what, second, third for you? Uh, It's my first. First. I've never been to an LWML convention. It's true. I know the first time ribbon crew. I didn't know, right? No, I've never been. So this is, yeah, it's wild and wonderful. So highlight, I mean, we're in Lexington, mm-hmm. checking out the, the scene here in Lexington and, mm-hmm. and hanging out with, what, mm-hmm. 3,000 of your favorite Lutheran friends. So Super fun. I think there is something <laughs> about being included. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't just, uh, I didn't just come. I didn't just sign up. I was asked. And that, I, that just sits so deep in my soul that someone thought that I should be included. And I think that's really cool. And then it can, like that theme continues. Like I see people in the hallway, you know, from my Nebraska zone and they're like, what? you know, <laughs> and I feel included. And then I see someone I knew in college and you feel included. I, that, something about, the, and I think the National Youth Gathering is like that too, where you're just like, whoa, this is an inclusive place. And that's really cool. That's, that's Christ. Deaconess Heidi Gaiman, author of Finding Hope from Brokenness to Restoration at the LWML National Convention in Lexington, Kentucky. Thanks so much for being our guest. Thanks for having me. This was awesome to be back. I can't wait to be back again next in fall, fall or whenever we come yeah. back. Yeah. Looking forward to it. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Don't, 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 don't.